All right, so our final demonstration will um, demonstrate how to use the uh, the RN41 Bluetooth device. Um, you can see how this is kind of building up to a completed device. So now that you know how to access the data from the ADXL345 accelerometer, the data from the uh, ITG3200 gyroscope, and the data from the RN41, or w you'll be able to stream it through the uh, RN41 uh, Bluetooth transceiver to your computer for data logging. And so this has many applications and uh, then you can do some uh, higher level machine learning algorithms to uh, do some classification of uh, events. So, but first things first, let's go ahead and open up the uh, BT test script. Um, it's basically just a very simple script. Uh, um, as you see here, uh, we're going to be using the uh, RN41, which requires uh, four connections. You need to hook up VCC, you need to hook up ground, you need to hook up the RX, uh, RX and the TX lines. And so the key here is that you need to cross the RX and TX lines you're using on the on the uh, the Maple development board with the lines you're using on the RN41, um, because you need to have TX speaking with RX and then RX speaking with TX. Um, I ended up using UART1. Um, those pins are available as uh, 7 and 8. Um, you can go ahead and look up in the uh, data sheet or the schematic uh, which pins uh, or what, what, uh, which one's which. Um, I'll leave that guys up that up to you as an exercise. Um, but once it's hooked up, the code looks something like this. Um, int LED pin 13. Um, you have a setup script which basically sets up the UART. Um, we're going to blink the LED in this particular example to show that we're actually doing something. Um, we're going to print hello world. Uh, this is going to actually be streamed over Bluetooth. Uh, we're going to digital write high and low. Um, and then if we have any data coming back, so if you send data, it'll actually display that data back to the uh, um, back to the Bluetooth. So uh, this will be able to show how we can transmit and receive. So. Uh, go ahead and push that data up. We'll go ahead and pause, and through the magic of video, we'll jump ahead. All right, so the code is now on the board. It's pushed up. Um, you can see it was a complete. Um, here's our board. So now we need to actually pair with this Bluetooth device. Uh, on a Mac, it's relatively simple, but it should be simple on other platforms too. Um, on a Windows box, it'll appear as a COM port once you've connected. On a, a Linux box, it'll appear as a device TTY, prefixed with TTY, likely ACMO, ACM0 or a USB0, depending on your platform. Um, on a Mac, it's TTY dot, uh, the device cl uh, ID. Um, I'll go ahead and set this up. So you go up to set Bluetooth device. Here's our Firefly FDC, our, uh, 5DCC, this is our device, go ahead and click continue. Um, I've already paired, but we'll do a pairing again just as a demonstration. Uh, the default passcode is uh, available in the data sheet, uh, but I'll go ahead and give it to you here. It's 1234. This is configurable, but we're going to go ahead and uh, not configure it because it's much easier when you have the default. Go ahead and click continue. So it'll go ahead and pair. Once it's done, it's paired successfully, the report's created, you can go ahead and quit out of here. You'll need to open up a serial, uh, or a terminal. Um, to uh, access the terminal, you can go ahead and list the devices. Uh, so tty. And here's the available devices. You can notice right here, uh, 5DCCSP is the one we're interested in. Um, so we'll go ahead and type that uh, 5D. Alright. Uh, first things first, we also need to uh, decide which terminal per, or terminal we're going to use, or uh, serial terminal we're going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and use screen. You're welcome to use Minicom on uh, Linux or if you're a Windows Hyper Terminal or Putty, it's up to you. Um, screen, uh, the device we want to connect to, and then we need to type in the baud rate. So this, our baud rate is going to be 115200. And up pops the terminal, and if everything went well, we'll actually see the data start to stream through. 
and then as you see I type keys in it actually tells me the ASCII key that represents that key so um, everything is working as expected uh, so go ahead and out and give, your, give it a whirl and see if you can't create your very own streaming data loggers uh, good luck